Hello there. What is going on, everybody? Today I'm going to be talking to you about a couple of things related to Armada, but primarily Clone Wars questions uh, that are on the top of my mind for how FFG is going to approach Clone Wars in Armada. Also do want to remind you guys about the gift card giveaway that's going on right now, as well as the Armada-specific giveaway for promos, which you can see right up here. Uh, I'm going to be giving away four Armada promos. All you have to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment on one of my Armada videos for the promos, and then as well that also enters you to give uh, win a, in the normal gift card giveaway, which is be a subscriber and leave a comment on any video. Uh, but make it a good one. Uh, for actually, I do have an, a kind of an assignment for you guys. I want to hear what you guys think. Uh, what are your biggest questions for the Armada Clone Wars uh, that will be up and coming? And I also want to talk about one other thing before I dive into that. And that is, I think, a lot of this in information or misinformation that's out there on social media right now. Because there are a lot of you guys, not necessarily you watchers, but a lot of people and Armada fans out there that are all over FFG when it comes to their, um, their, you know, their social media postings. And, and they're talking about like, oh, well, have you guys forgotten Armada? Have you guys forgotten Armada? X-Wing had a lot of news that just came out. Legion's had a lot of news that's been coming out. And as everything comes out, I see more and more people saying, is Armada dead? Have you forgotten about Armada? Let me just take this moment to remind you guys about a couple of important things. First thing, there's Armada news next Tuesday. There's Armada news Tuesday, Tuesday. There's Armada news coming. They're doing a live stream of Rebellion in the Rim, the next campaign expansion for Armada, which is packed to the gills with new stuff. There's new squadron cards, there's new upgrades, and there's a new campaign. There's a new commander, a custom commander thing that you can do for the campaign. There's also a 200 point format that's coming with that. That's like a mountain of new content for Armada in one cheap, cheap, cheap box that you can get. So like that alone is huge. Now I'm out of breath. So that's, there's a big preview of that coming Tuesday. They're going to be doing a live stream. You'll be able to ask questions about that. I will be trying to attend the live stream. If I can't, I'll be, you know, commenting on it afterwards. So you can definitely click that subscribe button and uh, click that bell for alerts so you can be notified when new stuff comes out because I will be bringing to you the information as soon as I can, like giving, giving you my take on it and hearing back from you guys as well. Now, that's just Tuesday. There are also going to be Armada news at Gen Con. They have said on social media that there is going to be Armada news presented at Gen Con. What exactly that is, I don't know. But there's also Armada, Armada Clone Wars coming out. There's also the Super Star Destroyer. Yes, it's been delayed, but it is still coming out. Keep in mind, it's like the biggest thing they've ever done. So, you know, it's just, it's proving to take some time. But that's coming out. There's also two more ships coming out, sizable ships. My guess is that's what we're going to see at Gen Con. I think we're going to see these new ships. So, there's a lot of stuff coming for Armada. There's a lot of things in the pipe. They're basically like four waves worth of stuff, right? Uh, the Rebellion in the Rim kind of being uh, a wave. The Super Star Destroyer being bigger than, physically bigger than a wave. Uh, a whole new wave of ships being two more ships at least. And Clone Wars. It's like four s separate release waves of, of things in the timeline right now. They have not forgotten about Armada, folks. They have not. And Tuesday is a live stream. So it's just pretty cool. Honestly. So it, my, my, my mission for you guys is if you do see people kind of that are under the impression that FFG has abandoned or forgotten Armada, just remind them and be friendly. You know, don't start fights, but remind them, dude or lady, it's coming. There's, there's a lot of stuff lined up. There's plenty of stuff like that's coming to be coming this month. So, you know, between Tuesday and then the in-flight brief. And oh, I think it's technically August 1st, so within a month. Point is, a lot of stuff is coming. So let's now jump into Clone Wars because there's a lot of questions, a lot of things to talk about with Clone Wars. And I've talked about them periodically, but I know I, it's one of the th questions I get asked the most. What do you think they're going to do? Do you think they're going to do a new core set? So let's talk about a new core set. I do think they'll do a new core set. I do think they'll do a new core set because Legion's getting a new core set. I think they're looking at things like X-Wing and saying, you know... Um, you know, I think they tried different things to see what works, but I think the Legion core set is going to sell extremely well. Legion seems to be doing extremely well right now, and I think a new core set addresses multiple problems. You see, X-Wing has the advantage of having a cheap core set, and it's easy for them to say, buy a core set for some stuff you don't want. It's okay, you can use it in the Clone Wars. And a lot of people complain about that to this day, that you have to buy an X-Wing and a TIE Fighter. 
in order, or X-Wing and two TIE Fighters just to play Republic or something like that. Uh, I, I think they will not make the same mistake, especially with the price of Armada's core set and the fact that Clone Wars may introduce so many new people, they're going to want to give those people a clear entry point. And in the case of X-Wing 2.0, that new core set for 2.0 was still relatively new and they had so many of them, I don't think they needed to. Although I would, would probably guess that at some point X-Wing might have another core set, another entry option at some point, maybe. And, and, and again... This might be, they may be taking the a la carte approach and coming out with an Essentials kit as well, along with the Clone Wars. But I expect when Clone Wars for Armada launches, there will be a Clone Wars specific core set. And perhaps at some point after that, we'll get an Essentials kit for those people who come in after the fact that only want, you know, um, to be able to buy specific stuff. They are laser focused and they know exactly what they want. Uh, but to appeal to a larger audience to try to make Armada get caught on a little bit more, I do expect a core set. Now, that core set may be, and this is a question I have, will that core set basically be focused on the 200-point format? Because that would allow for a cheaper core set, which is one of the biggest concerns. Uh, and the 200, But again, there's a lot of questions that we still have about the 200-point format, and this kind of filters into Tuesday's live stream. I'm hoping we get some news on the 200-point format, and uh, I can't wait to play the 200-point format like a lot with other people who are already familiar with it, and really kind of form a genuine opinion on, on what I think it means for the game and, and how much, you know, to be able to weigh it with the full game. So... I wouldn't be surprised if a core set is geared at the 200-point format, geared for a 3x3 mat for smaller games, and expandable to the full game, but the, with the two with the 200-point format being a real thing, uh, a major thing. Uh, I'm also curious how they'll address squadrons, uh, if they're going to make any changes with squadron play, if they're going to apply any lessons learned, uh, and and it filters into like the bigger question is, will this be an Armada 2.0, or, or, or maybe somewhere in between, as the big question is like, how much of a rules overhaul can we expect with the Clone Wars coming? I, I think there are, aren't a whole lot of problems. I don't think there's enough wrong with Armada to justify a 2.0. I think there's very few things that you can easily clean up with perhaps a 1.5. So I, I, I would guess that they will do a, pretty much a rules update, uh, but I do not expect them to do a complete rules overhaul. I don't expect a full 2.0. 1.5 is kind of where I would be, but that's one big question I have. Like, what kind of fundamental rules changes are they looking into? Are they looking into some of the squadron and, uh, you know, game expediency uh, considerations? You know, ranges from squadrons, do they have to be touching to attack? All of these things, This you know, like, something as big as a Clone Wars launch and a new core set is a great time to re-address uh, those fundamental concerns and, and be able to look at things like that. Um... Hard errata also is another thing that I want to look at, too. I, I've seen people suggest things like certain cards that are a little overpowered, like the Demolisher title for the Gladiator, for example. If that is indeed overpowered, would a new core set in like a, a 1.5 or like a soft reboot be a good time to reprint certain cards? Which leads into the next point. Will there be card packs for Armada? They've already hinted pretty hard that card packs are coming for other games, uh, and I think X-Wing is a prime candidate for stuff like that, but Armada is definitely a prime candidate for it too, because Armada is one of the worst offenders with having stuff deliberately hidden behind paywalls, whereas this this is like, you know, the, the MC-30 is maybe the only place you can get Turbolaser reroute circuits, and the the the, uh, the home uh, the home one may be the only place you can get uh, cluster bombs. Uh, granted, that's not a card that's in demand. Spinal Armament, only available with the Liberty. Things like that. Um, so I think a card pack would be a huge boon to the Armada community. I know so many people that would be down for that. I would be down for that, too. Um, That'd be amazing. So uh, hopefully that will be coming also with Clone Wars, or maybe even before. I, heck, I would not have a problem if it came before. But Clone Wars coming out is a fantastic opportunity because you're going to want new players not to come in and say, I got my Venator, I got you know all my Republic ships. Wait, but I have to buy every single Rebel ship because those all have upgrades that I want. No. So Clone Wars makes for the perfect time to launch a card pack, and hopefully they will follow a lot of the Legion... Um, precedents and learning where they can from if there's any failures upon the official release of Clone Wars Legion from that. And, uh, you know, I've, I've got a, I've other questions like what kind of ships will, will be included. I think if they do a softer 200-point uh, format, 
uh, for the for the focus of the new core set, then that leads me to think that there's very likely we could end up seeing you know maybe just two ships, you know, one for each side in in a in a Clone Wars core set. Uh, so that is certainly a concern. Uh, and and I think one more that I'm going to give to you guys is Jedi. How are they going to address Jedi now? I think the simplest option would just be to make them officers. But at some point, aren't you going to have some type of like generic Jedi, right? Well, aren't you going to have something that is maybe some or some generic Force user user that might not be restricted to a specific faction? Might it make sense? I wonder to have a specific um, Jedi or maybe Force adherent um, upgrade. Because that could be beneficial to the game all around. So perhaps you add a separate type of type of officer upgrade uh, that maybe Venators have for the Republic that maybe they don't have for the Empire. And that's another way to distinguish. So in addition to having an officer, you can also have uh, a Jedi. So because because and and that makes sense too because you're going to have maybe Wolf Yularen at the bridge of a Venator. But then at the same time, you're also going to have Yoda standing next to him and be like, mm, yes, we will go down to the planet's surface. There, I will fight. You know, stuff like that. Actually, no, he wouldn't be talking about the surface, would he? Not, not an armada. Not an armada. But the point is, um, separating those would give you a lot more flexibility, uh, and as well as add some cool combos and some cool flavor to those other factions. And, and, and honestly, the separatists could have a little bit of that too. And you could eventually add that to the Republic or or even, um, I'm sorry, to the to the Rebels or the Empire. Uh, if you want to do Inquisitors and like, you know, uh, some of the, some of the uh, you know, hidden Jedi like grown up Ahsoka. Uh, well, she is in there, but they could add a different version of Ahsoka perhaps. Or, uh, you know, like if you want to add some more Jedi and um, characters to, to the, to the, Rebel, um, to the Re Rebellion. So there is, you know, there, there is possibility for them to do that sort of thing. Um, but, you know, that's one thing. I was like, how are they going to approach the Force? Because I think that's going to be a great... I think it's going to be the great balancer. Because, you know, one. I think that one of the top questions a lot of people have is like, how do you balance old ships versus new ships? And I'm like, well, I don't think that's a problem. Because I don't think in Star Wars, technology changes that much over time. It's more of a question of, as stuff gets older, it's weaker. But you're playing the Republic fleet when it's new. So those should be maybe not an even match for an Imperial fleet. But in the same ballpark, and especially if there's Jedi at the helm, forget about it, you know? So I think every faction is going to be able to work with each other. I'm actually more interested in how the First Order will potentially balance out, and we're going to have to wait and really until we see how Episode Nine plays out, until we really get into the heavy speculation on how sequel factions will work in Star Wars Armada. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you today. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Make sure you enter to win those giveaways. I will be announcing both of them before Gen Con, so stay tuned for that. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Follow me on uh, all the social media links that are in the description below. If you want to also hop on Patreon and help me out that way, it would be a huge help. My patrons are definitely one of the things keeping this channel running and allowing me to do things like going to Gen Con and bringing you coverage from there. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, have a great day.